Hey guys, flying from up to lands here, and today we're talking gear, again. This time, we're going to have a look at my set of contact Zeiss lenses. I know a lot of people these days are considering buying vintage lenses, so I thought this video might give you some insights. In this video I want to go over the kit that I own, why I decided to get the contact Zeiss specifically, the pros and cons of vintage lenses, how do they compare to the Canon FD, and whether or not I would recommend these. Before I start, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one, and let's jump into it. So before we really dive into this, here's a bit brief of history on these lenses. So back in the 1970s, the German brand Carl Zeiss collaborated with the Japanese brand Yashica to create a new line of contact SLR cameras. Featuring a new mount, the contacts Yashica. What makes a lot of people interested in these lenses, myself included, is that the contact Zeiss lenses were first released in the same year as the Zeiss Super Speeds, which are similar lenses used in movies like The Shining, Lost in Translation, or Solo. They even feature the same Zeiss signature T coating brand, which make them very attractive considering the price of the super speeds. So why getting these lenses in the first place? The main reason for me was that I always wanted a set of high quality primes. I shoot a lot with zoom lenses, especially for documentary work, but shooting with primes is such a nice experience that forces me to think more about composition. The intention of buying these is to shoot more short films, commercials, and even music videos. Now I had the options to either go with modern cinema glass, modern stills lenses, or vintage ones. I chose to go with vintage stills lenses, and a contact Zeiss in particular, for a few reasons. First, they are affordable, especially when compared to modern cine lenses. They are also high quality pieces of glass. They are also a good investment, lenses like the contacts keep their value very well, and they might actually be even more valuable since the more people want them, the more the demand increases, and since they don't make them anymore, they gain value. I love lenses and cameras in general, and I've always been into camera gear, so owning a set of vintage contact Zeiss lenses is very appealing to me, and I find them beautiful too. They are cheaper than Leica's. When it comes to vintage glass, most people choose between Leica, Zeiss, Canon, and Nikon. They are also neutral, which means that they don't have too much of a look, and they can be used on lots of different projects. They handle flares and contrast very well. They're easy to adapt. A cheap adapter will do. They feature a smooth and longer focus throughout than most modern stills lenses, but not as long as cinema lenses which makes them great for solo operators. They are also small and fairly light. And finally, I just love hunting for lenses on eBay and other websites. It took me about 5 months to complete my set and I had to return 2 of them at some point. If you are interested in getting these lenses, I suggest to check out the Contact Zeiss survival guide on reduser.net. My kit. So my kit consists of 4 lenses. I chose this focal length in order to be able to pretty much cover a whole project on them. I have the 18 f4, which is my wide and perfect for city, interiors and landscape. Then the 28mm 2.8, which is the first one that I got and the one that I use the most. You can pretty much read anything with this focal length. People, city, outdoors and I even put it on the gimbal. Then I have the 51.4 and the 85 2.8. All MM, which stands for multi-mode, and when you start researching, it seems like they're slightly better than the AE ones and don't feature the Ninja Star Bokeh. Apart from the 18, they are all f2.8 or faster, which means I can have a shallow depth of field and also shoot in low light conditions. The fact that they're pretty much the same size and weight makes it very easy to swap when using a follow focus or to use on a gimbal, but also easy to store and carry. In the future, I might add a 21mm, 35mm or even a 135 but for now, I'm happy with this 4. I use them on my BMPCC 6K and I just love the image that comes out of that combo. I shot this whole letterpress documentary on them and I love the experience. Out of all the lenses that I shoot with and own, these are the ones that are the most special to me and the ones that I enjoy using the most as well. Differences with modern lenses When you compare vintage lenses with modern glass, there are a few differences. First of all, they have more of a look when it comes to the image. Whilst the contact size are fairly neutral, they still do have a specific and organic look to them, especially when compared to a Sigma lens for example. They are significantly cheaper, 
Obviously you have rare vintage glass and something like the Contax 21mm f2.8 will set you back a couple of grand, but in general you can get a decent set of vintage lenses for the price of a modern piece of cinema glass. They are also numbered. This might not be the case for all, but my Contax Zeiss are, and it just makes them a little bit more exciting and unique, and again, this will probably increase the value in your future, based on the number that you have. And of course, you have the vintage element to it, knowing that that lens has been around for decades is a special feeling when you shoot with it. So now some pros and cons of owning these vintage lenses. Pros. The image is beautiful. I find it very hard to explain, but every time I shoot with the contacts, everything looks better, more organic. It has more depth and the colors are stunning. They are solidly built. These lenses are made of metal and feel very sturdy. They have been around for 30 plus years and are still in great shape. Again, these are affordable compared to Cineglass. I pay roughly $2,000 for my whole kit. They have a long focus throw, which makes it very nice and comfortable to shoot, without being too long like a proper cinema glass if you do not want to use a fuller focus. These lenses also cover full frame sensors, and so are quite future proof. Cons. Being vintage glass, you have some imperfections, either on the body itself or the actual glass. As you can see on the documentary I show with the contact lenses, there are a lot of chromatic aberration. When you buy older lenses, you also risk of finding fungus and dust, which is why it is very important to check first or to be able to return the item. As I mentioned before, I had to return two of mine, despite being advertised as mint condition. Also, good lenses are hard to find, and you might have to wait quite a while, but this is also part of the game of hunting vintage glass. Depending on the demand, they can still be quite expensive for a full set. And finally, since they are less clinical, you might not be able to use them as much as you like. Either you work with a crew that has a specific set they want to use, or they just don't fit what you need to shoot. Mod. A lot of people choose to cinemod these lenses, which means to declick the aperture, swap the mount, change the front filter, and add focus gearing. At the moment, only one of my lenses was bought this way, and I do not feel the need to do it for the other ones just yet. Purely because it is a bit expensive, but I do think that it is a good thing to do if you intend to use them regularly. At the moment, I'm just using cheap adapters, which I'll link in the description below. FD versus contacts. Since I own a couple of Canon FD lenses, I thought I would make a quick comparison. The Canons are cheaper and more common, so easier to find, but they also feel more plasticky. The FD also flare more and are less consistent, and that is why I decided to get the contacts instead. However, they are still a great alternative to contacts or Leica. Would I recommend these lenses? If you're looking for high quality glass with a slight vintage look and feel, while still retaining a neutral image, then these are perfect and I would say go for it. However, nowadays it isn't too expensive or too hard to own a set of modern cinema lenses, thanks to brands like Mikey or Zine, especially if you own a Micro Four Third or Super 35 sensor camera. Or, as I was mentioning, if you're just after that vintage look or just starting out, then the Canon FD are a great option too. What I like about the contact size is that they provide the best of both stills and cinema lenses. They are compact and light, like modern stills lenses, but have a long focus throw, all metal built, and a beautiful image like cinema lenses. Of course lenses are not what makes a great piece of content, but vintage lenses can help in achieving a specific look or feel, and they are fun to use. Hope you've enjoyed this video and that it was helpful to you. Don't forget to subscribe and let me know in the comments what lenses you guys use. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.